Welcome to Beyond Bite Wings, the business side of dentistry, brought to you by Edwards & Associates PC. Join us as we discuss how to build your dental practice, optimize your income, and plan for your future. This podcast is distributed with the understanding that Edwards & Associates PC is not rendering legal, accounting, or professional advice. Listeners should consult with their business advisors before acting on any of the information that is shared. At Edwards & Associates PC, our business is the business of dentistry. For help or more information, visit our website at enassociates.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of Beyond Bite Wings. In today's episode, we will be talking about looking into personality types and how it's related to a dental practice. And within our studio, we have our regulars, Robert. Good afternoon. And Lynn again. Am I a regular? Yeah, now I'm I hope so. I really hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Great to be back. Oh, it's always a pleasure having you here, Lynn. And a special guest speaker who we've had on two other episodes since the last time, Tamara Whitley. Yay. Hi. Hello. I'm so happy y'all are keeping having me come back. <laughs> me too. <laughs> it's always exciting. And then you bring in such positive energy and the exuberance into our podcast episodes. It's just amazing. Yeah. It's Account- because running a dental Account- office Account- can be fun. Energy. It can? Wow. <laughs> it can be fun, oh, that's, guys. That's a great way to start the episode. That is a great uh-huh. way to start it. Absolutely. Because we have a lot of people that would disagree with that. <laughs> we do. We do. I, I agree with you, but you've got to put effort into it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Okay, right. so so Tamara, I, I want to hear what you call this episode because I love your title. My title is Lions, Otters, Golden Retrievers, Beavers. Oh my. <laughs> <That's> greatness. <laughs> Wait, we're talking about animals today? <laughs> we sure are. It's the critter model of personality assessment and it specifically how it applies to the disc model. Amazing. And how did you come about this? The, the, you know me by now, this being my third podcast with you guys, I got to tell you a story. So <laughs> DISC means, and let me just uh, align the critters with the model, just starting us out. So a lion is dominant. That's the D. That makes sense to me. Right. Influencing is the otter. And I'll get to why otters are otters, um, and why they are the I in DISC. And then golden retrievers are the stable, which is the S in DISC. And then you've got the beaver, which is the compliant. And and think about this just real quick. Lions are lions. You know what lions do. Otters are the playful ones. They are the people people. They want to have and talk and do, and they don't have the detail-orientedness. They don't like the details. They're the social people. They're the social people. They're your fun people, right? Your S's, your stable, your golden retriever, it's just exactly what that is because, you know, they're good with kids. They're good, you know, they're, they're just stable human beings. There's not way highs and way lows, but they're just stable individuals. But stable individuals don't like change. But so, you know, it's there pros these, and cons to there's each. pros and cons to every single personality type. And and there's multitude of personality assessments on the market. Myers-Briggs, Herman mm-hmm. Brain, DISC, you know. So we're just picking DISC because within ADOM, if you heard our last episode, they use DISC a lot. And so um, it's... It's really neat to see how it correlates. But nobody in ADOM yet has had the critter model. Um, Let me tell you why I'm beaver is compliant. So you measure um, twice, cut once. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are building the dam. So they have Mm -hmm. to know the data. They have to know the plan. They will execute it once they know the data. So those are your analytics. Analytics, absolutely. So you've got your dominant lions, your influencing otters, your golden retriever stables, and your compliant beavers. All right. So now let me take you way back. We're talking probably 
30 years when I had the opportunity, and it was a rare opportunity, to actually pick the team. So it was implementing pharmacy drug management benefits, all right? So because they, in the old world, they would have account managers, and then they would bring on new clients, and the account manager had to not only service the existing, but they had to get, they had to implement new business as well. And it just became untenable because it's too much work for that person. So because I was good at implementing All right. So you've got a lot of account managers or S's because they're stable, right? They know what is predicted. They can service their their patients, their clients, because they aren't having change thrown at them every day. But your implementers, they don't mind. They like flying by the seat of their pants. And change doesn't bother them at all, right? So I was really good at implementing because that's just what I do. I just kind of fly by the seat of my pants and get it done. And so as a result of me being good at it, they promoted me and said, all right, we're going to have a dedicated implementation team, and that's all that these people do. And so I had the rare ability to not inherit a team, but I got to hire every single person on my team. So what did I do? Mm-hmm. I went, if y'all haven't figured it out just from the previous podcast, I'm a lion. That is me. And so at the time, it, early on in my career, I needed everybody just like me. I hired a whole team of lions, and it was beautiful. A true pride. <clears throat> oh, honey, <laughs> it was. It was. It was just a work of art. <clears throat> and so my VP at the time promptly took, after I spent all of this time hiring the perfect people for my beautiful team, who were awesome, because they were just like me. Right. He took them all away. And he gave me these people who, I assure you, were less than awesome. Okay? (laughs) They were nothing like me. And I was livid. I went into his office. It's a miracle that I stayed on for you, as you many acted years. You like a lion. <clears throat> oh, honey, <laughs> I sure did. I slammed my hand down on his desk and I said, you are setting me up to fail and I don't fail and this is going to be terrible. And when it does, it's all on you. And so here's my viewpoint that these are less than awesome people because they're not like me. And we go on our merry way. And I treat them like they are less than awesome people because they were. They were slow. They had to think too much to make decisions. What in the heck? They needed data. What? (laughs) I mean, come on. I will take you so far off the cliff so far, it'll make your head spin, (laughs) right? I don't need somebody stopping me from proceeding because we're going to make it, right? All right, so... Big issue came up, and it was an industry issue that was impacting our ability to have mail-order drugs. And so it dealt with the eligibility type file, but it was called an NCPDP. I know that's a little bit too much of detail. Some of the beaver in me is coming out, (laughs) which, by the way, that's important to know that we have all of these critters in us. It's just that we have our dominant stuff. So anyway, didn't mean to digress on that, but so... Here I was, we we're racking our brains, we're all trying to figure this out, and one day, I had one of the people on my team come into my office, which was in New Jersey at the time, because I was commuting back and forth from Texas, and he slams down a solution, and the miracle of the story is that he slams it down, and he said, read this, and he goes out and he slams the door, because guess what? If you treat your people like they're less than awesome— they're going to come back at you. There's only so much they can take. And it's a miracle that that team, I still had people because they would have been abandoning ship had they been able to do that, right? So here he goes. He slams the door. And the first miracle of this is like, oh my God, this slow thinking person thinks they've got this solution. So I look at it, you know, just very glancingly. And then I do a double take and I go, Oh my gosh, y'all, this is going to work. So here is my less than awesome person who didn't know 
anything, right? Because they were just dumb, because they were so slow in their thinking and blah, blah, blah. And then I just was like, "Uh uh-oh. That's the hard part. That's when I went back to my VP. I showed him the solution that, believe it or not, is still in play today. Without this one person, people would not be able to get their mail-order drugs efficiently without this solution that's still in the market today, right? Mm -hmm. So I tell him that, and I said, oh, I said, oh, my gosh, I was so wrong, and you were so right, and now I understand the lesson you were trying to teach me, and that is that my team would have failed with all those lions. I needed the people, people, the fun, the social, to be able to connect with my clients, right? I needed those data people to keep me from killing us when I took us off the ledge Mm -hmm. as a lion. So I needed my beavers to stand up and say, look at the data. And I needed my golden retrievers to sit there and say, you're gonna kill us. Don't take us off the ledge. You know, you're going in the wrong direction. So the fact that I had to learn that lesson the hard way, my VP had that all in his plan to teach me as a leader how to lead and how to respect the differences that a well-diverse team needs. So you need all of these critters in your dental office. You absolutely do if you're going to have a successful dental office. You're not going to have a good one if you got too many darn lines in the house. Mm-hmm. I Trust me, I've already been there, done that, and it doesn't work. So the next step that I had to take, going back still in time, after I you know, do the May culpa with my VP, is I had to do the hardest thing in my career ever, and that was to go beg the forgiveness of those people that I had said were less than awesome. And this is the next miracle, or the the only miracle that really counted. They not only forgave me, they followed me through years of my career. Wow. Because I was a leader, and I was a lion, but I was a leader that learns. And I was teachable, and they knew that. And they knew then They could come to me and say, you're going to kill us. Stop. You know, but before that, because of the way I had treated them, it wouldn't work. It would never work. There was no communication. No, 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 no. So by getting on with, and it was, it's kind of funny. I mean, at the time, I didn't know all of the critters, right? The whole lesson was you need a diverse team if you're going to pull this together. I actually got the critters and lined with DISC because they taught me DISC. I knew DISC well, but the critter model came in. Bill and I have been married now almost 32 years in April. And at year seven, never forget it, we went to a class, a marriage class that taught communicating when you are the critters. So they put disc and they put the the critters on top. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so fun. I'm going to be able to use this for the rest of my life. And I do. And it absolutely correlates and applies to a dental office. Wow. Well, it's a lot more fun with the critter names. Than, <laughs> yes, it is. Isn't it? Than yeah. the, the standard boring I know, yeah. right? accountant probably chosen names. Well, like ple- <laughs> pleaser analytic. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It, it, it's those defining terms. But the critters, the critters just bring it to to the forefront of what it is that that, that critter does. Right? Right. So. I loved your story. There was such a powerful <laughs> message there. I mean, for a second, I was thinking, you know. I think innately, a lot of our business owners may want to choose to only hire people that are like them because right. mm-hmm. that's their comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Right. That's what they know. That's something they can refer back to. I think the message here is that be okay to be outside of your comfort zone, and then you'll see the wonders and the miracles that they bring in. Right. They, Absolutely. They have different skills. You you can't have every skill. Nope. Mm-hmm. You need other people on the team that have the other skills that you can't provide. Right. And And us lions... We think we can do it all. We can't, you know, but it's not until you come to that realization that you may be a lion, but you're not going to be successful if 
all you've got around you is a bunch of lions. Because then you start a, growling at mm-hmm. each other. Even an accounting office doesn't need all analytics. No, mm-hmm. not at all. No, I because totally agree. my office wouldn't speak to anybody if I didn't have yes. anybody fun on the staff. Oh, that sounds like most accounting offices. <laughs> it does sound like most accounting offices. <laughs> we need those social people. Well, yeah. I I vowed in that marriage class to use the critters for from then on with all of my various teams. And so that's how I had done it my entire career in corporate America. I I knew who my lions were. I knew who my otters were. I knew who my beavers were. And guess what? They all know it, too. And you can make this an actual fun game in a dental office because I actually have three um, ways that I can apply it. Y'all want to hear about them? Of course. Okay. Let me ask you a question before you go there. Mm -hmm. When you're interviewing, how do you assess whether they're a lion or a beaver or an otter? I am so glad you asked. So that's one of the three areas, (laughs) Robert. Man, that was awesome. You just like served it up on a platter for me. The three areas are hiring and facilitating your own team meetings, however frequent that is, and then communicating with patients. Believe it or not, you've got lions, otters, golden retrievers, and beavers as patients. Which makes total sense, but I've, I was only thinking of it as it would pertain to the staff. Uh-huh. Yeah, me too. Yep. Yeah. Right, right. And, and, and that's true. Until you start really diving into this, it's hilarious. All, my entire family, I know who what critter they are. Because <laughs> why? Why is that so important? Because that opens up the communication in your family, you know, life as well. So why not enhance the way you communicate with your patients and take that relationship to the whole new level? And the same thing with your people. And this is going to probably go against, if y'all haven't figured out, I'm doing dental or doing dentistry different kind of gal. We have figured that out. The most important people in a dental office are not the patients. Oh, yeah? They are not the patients. Granted, I will give you that without patients, you have no dental practice, right? But if you don't take care of your employees and you don't know who your employees are, then they're not going to take care of those patients. If they are mistreating or, and not that they would be mistreat, but if they're not communicating on a level with those patients because they don't even understand what their own communication style is, then you're not going to have patience for very long. That's right. And that goes throughout the entire practice, front end to back end. You better know what you got. All right. So let's talk about hiring because that one, that one is a really good one to apply this standard to. So because of ADOM, I knew and learned about Dental Post. Dental Post is where you can go out and you can post um, resumes, and is it's a wealth of resumes for the dental world, right? The assistants, clinicians, front office, dentists, even dentists are out there on it. And part of building a profile for yourself, there's disc assessment. Ah, okay. And so they take, and it's only a 10-question one, and it's beautiful because Then when you get ready to hire, my very first thing that I do is I figure out what are my people, all right? Because we've already established that, and I'll tell you how we do that here in a minute. My existing people. But I use the dental assistant, I mean, the assessment in my logon on Dental Post. I put every person on my team through that 10 question, and then I instantly know what critter they are. Right. But we kept it a secret for when we were uh, first rolling this out. We kept everybody's thing a secret. And then when we went into team meetings, it was fun because we said, all right, what do you think that one, you know, this person, what's that critter? (laughs) And then everybody would give their view. And then you reveal what their real critter that they think they actually are. And it's, it's so fun because then you can start building in those team meetings. What are the things that make this person tick? What are the blind spots that they may have that they don't even realize that they have, but they do. And how do you communicate best with them? What's the body language for each of the critters? that you need to know, right? So each month we have our team meetings monthly. And again, doing dental 
differently. We don't do morning huddles, guys, and I can tell you a whole reason about that later. But in these team meetings, we would bring a style, and we would go through all of the details to learn how to communicate. How does a lion like to be communicated with? How does an otter? Oh, I know the otter one. You just rub your cheeks. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That is so good. See, you've already got the hang of this, Abby. All right. But so we sit here and have it every single month. And then the neat thing is when conflict arises in the office, use that as an example of where the lion and the golden retriever were going at each other and they were going at each other in their own style instead of flexing to the other style. And it happens. It happens all the time. And so I would then charge one of them, say, okay, I want you to bring me an example in the next meeting as to how you resolved it. So that's what we did at first. You you figure out your people, then you bring it back in and you uh, disclose what everybody is. And then the next meeting is, okay, here, we're going to talk about lions today. Okay, we're going to talk about otters today. And so you learn those communication styles. So Technically, I just jumped to the team meeting you, one. You did, but yeah. that's but it's not important. allowed. But I know, we'll make really, an I totally, for you. I totally what? went out of order, <laughs> but <laughs> but it's important because then when it comes to hiring, maybe I should change the order because <laughs> because if you don't know who your people are, duh. I just had a light bulb yeah. over my head. If you don't know who your people are, then you don't know who to hire. Right. So when it came time for my golden retriever mother, who happened to be one of the front desk people in our practice before she retired, she was a golden retriever. But I knew I wanted an otter up front Makes because sense. those are the people, that's the first person that they see when they walk into the office. And I want somebody and I've got an otter. Oh, honey, do I have an otter up front in our office? She plays six degrees of separation of Kevin Bacon. Well, it's six degrees of Donna, you know, <laughs> and how she connects herself to every single patient that walks in my door. She will find a way to connect herself Which to you. Which is what you want which she feeds off of. Now, when I tell her, okay, we got to get to the checklist, our proactive <laughs> checklist that we do day after day, and it's detail-oriented, she starts going, oh, don't make me do that. <laughs> you know? Because why? Otters hate that. They want to go around and be social butterflies. They don't want to pay attention to the details, but that's who I need up front. So when I go to hire... I go out to Dental Post, and I don't just put the job description out there. Instead, I buy the access to the resumes because if a person takes the time, it's not required that they do the DISC assessment, but if they take the time to do the DISC assessment and tell me what they are, then that tells me, oh, this person's invested in me knowing who they are, and that's what DISC allows you to do. So if there's a a resume out there that doesn't have a picture because I need to see that what kind of critter they are. And you can sometimes tell that from body language, how they're, and you learn that. Okay. They want a picture and, or they have to have a picture and they have to have disc. If they don't have disc, I move off of them. And I don't care who they are. I don't care what their resume says. If they don't have the time, then I don't have the time to interview them. So if they have 20 years experience, but they didn't... They didn't bother with it? You move mm -mm. on. Nope. I would rather have a one-year person with experience knowing that this is important and have a complete profile then I would ever hire somebody who knows it all and doesn't take the time to do it and just slaps their resume, thinking that their res the words on mm -hmm. a resume are what's going to uh -huh. draw me to them. Yeah. Mm -mm. Nope, well, nope, this, nope. And this makes so much sense. I mean, we, we're the same way when we hire. We have our qualifications, and their part of it is an assessment. Absolutely. And if you don't do it, then you are not working for my office. That's right. Because I need to know these things about you. So why would that not be the same for a dental practice? Yeah. Exactly. But so many dental practices, when it comes to hiring, they just get them in for a working interview. Do yeah. we think they're going to work out? Okay, great. Have you figured out yet how costly it is to hire the wrong oh, person to your practice? It's crazy. It can be like ten to $20,000. I'm not kidding, guys. Because then you've got all of a sudden all this unemployment stuff that comes up because 
because you, it's not working out. I don't care if you put them on probation for 90 days. Guess what? Doing dental differently. I don't put people on probation. I'm just a little curious. So I know you mentioned this earlier, too, that most dentists are just calling in people for a work interview. And then if they like them, they hire them, right? And then you also mentioned that you personally have an eight-step hiring process, which is Sounds like a little cumbersome, maybe, if let's say I'm on the applicant side. What would make me apply your way as opposed to some of the easier ways? When we, all right, so the, the eight-step process, and it does, it sounds crazy, right? And and a dental office is going, we don't have time for this. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? You don't have time to hire the wrong person either. Mm-hmm. So the the very first step is what I just described to you. I go out and I look to see if I've got a critter that fits what I'm looking for, all right? Because my hygienists need to be a, and sometimes that's the neat thing about Dental Post too, guys, because you can have a combo. Mm-hmm. And so my beavers and golden retrievers, they make awesome hygienists. Is the, Do I have a lion in my office as a hygienist? You bet. I mean, it, it, so it, I'm not trying to say they all have to be a certain way, but if you don't even know who your own team is, how are you going to hire? So then that's the first step. You go out and you look for who you want to attempt to bring in, right? So the next step is me contacting that person using their resume. And the way that I get them is I'm awfully interested in finding what kind of critter you are. And from what I'm seeing, based on your disc profile, you look to be the kind of critter I want to hire. Well, let me tell you, when you send an email (laughs) asking people what their critter is, they're curious. They're like, what the heck is this? This is kind of strange. This has never happened to me in the dental world. What is she doing? And that's the point, because then it starts drawing people in. And I have a phone over the phone, and I say to them, okay, so we're interested in having you come in for a cultural interview as well as a clinical interview. You will not have a working interview at this point. And then we have them come in, and Dr. Bill does the clinical, and I do the cultural. And you'll have to have me back for the cultural podcast because there's more detail that we don't have time for today. But you perform the cultural interview. Then the two of us decide... Is this person, do we think, based on the cultural interview, it's the cultural one that is actually the deciding, because they go to school. Yeah. They know how to clean you teeth. You can teach the skills. They know, exactly. And, you and, can teach the skills. And how long does that interview take? The, the cultural and clinical, we do it together, and I'm not even kidding. It can last from an hour to two hours. Okay. Not, not because... And and I warned them ahead of time that this is but not. That's not a crazy amount. No, of time. not at all. I mean, it's, I would expect at least an hour, mm-hmm. but it's not like a working interview is going to be it's half a day or a whole all. day. No, right. so it's a couple of hours maybe. And but we still get to the working interview part. Yeah. I mean, because we still need to see that. That's a critical part. And I'm not saying working interviews not, but even before you get to that point, you need to do your due diligence up front. And so we decide together okay, we're going to move this one forward. And then we have already told them and we've prepared them for this. We let the entire office, we bring lunch in and we take the candidate and we just leave the entire team without me and Dr. Bill in there. So they can start asking questions. Is it really like this? I got the feeling that, you know, y'all are like a family practice and, and you care about your people, but what is it really? And how do you do things? Because We do different dentistry, right? I mean, they've never been through a cultural interview like this. Some of them tell me it's akin to therapy. I've had so (laughs) many candidates cry in the cultural interview. I always have a box of Kleenex on the table to be ready to hand to them. So seriously, yeah, I'm telling you, you got to have me back. Okay. Anyway, (laughs) I'm I'm plugging my own self to do future podcasts. We're going to have you back. Okay. Yay. Yay. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. But anyway, yes, uh, seriously, it's so interesting. But anyway, so we get them with the team and we let them have an hour to just themselves to figure out, is this really something that is a fit. The next step after that, the candidate leaves and we'll let them know if we're going to invite them back for a working interview. And then we talk to our team. What do you think? Do you think they're going to 
you know, fit where we need them to fit? Do you think that they're going to be a team player? You know, all of those characteristics of the critters, are they going to fit what we're asking them to do? Or have I put a lion on them and we know we need a golden retriever, you know, and they will stop me because they know that they can tell me anything and it will not impact our relationship. So if they love the fact that they are invested, do we make the final decision? Absolutely. Of course. Right. But if the team likes it, they're going to bring in a buy-in from the support. There's never this, once you bring in a new person, do they feel threatened? Do they think they're going to be better than themselves? By integrating it all up front, all of a sudden, they're on board with the decision that we ultimately make. So if they come out of that lunch with a thumbs up, then we invite them back for a working interview. That's and we amazing. do a working interview for probably, you know, at least a minimum of half a day, but we would prefer all day if they can, you know, fit it in. Well, I those are just, it's good to be thorough like that because, again, people, they come in for a working interview and they're hired based on the fact of, did I like them or not? Yes. But that has nothing to do with whether they can perform the job. And plus, they were on their best behavior. Of course, you liked them. How, if if you didn't like them, if they're not playing to your desires, then then they would never get a job. So, that's right. But that's a bad way to hire. That's exactly right. And after the working interview, then we extend an offer. So those are the eight steps, I think. I think I caught them all. But. Oh, wow. That's amazing. <clears throat> in a very inclusive way of hiring. I mean, you're respecting the differences, right? Absolutely. Like, we need the differences. It's not even just respecting them. I need them. Right. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> Long time, once upon a time. Right. Well, that was a great story, though. I mean, and I'm trying to draw from there. I'm trying to see the pros. Uh, it's mostly pros, really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, you know. Well, the only con I can think of is I, if I'm a dentist, my pushback is going to be, well, that takes too long. I need somebody now. Mm-hmm. And you hire the wrong person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then guess what? You're back in the cycle of hiring, oh, yeah. sure. hiring again sure. because that person didn't work out. Yep. So because All because you were in too dang hurry. Yeah. Don't be in a hurry to hire. But so you're saying even in today's market where, you know, there's a shortage of people, they should still. One of my hygienists, which this shocks everybody, she went through the process in the middle of COVID. I was going to say, because hygienists are like a unicorn. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. And right now, and I totally get it. But but guess what, guys? And, uh, you know, I may be shot in the foot tomorrow, but my team is solid. They're not going anywhere. They love our office, and it's because of the way we treat them, and it is the way they treat us, and it is a beautiful thing when you got all the critters, and they're at the zoo, and because dental offices can be a zoo, right. but everybody's clicking, and, and that's why it's important, too, because now all of a sudden, our people know how to communicate, right. and they are the most important person in the office. It's right. not the patient. Right. It is the employee. Right. And then the patients. So we need to know what our patients are. That's the third area where we use the critters. Okay. Well, they do not have a disc assessment on file. Nope. <laughs> that too, so and that's, how do you figure you this out? You are exactly right. And, and what's so funny about it is because once you learn this and it just becomes innate in you, you can spot people. And you can say, oh, that one, I just, right before I came to do this podcast, boy, did I have a lion in my waiting room. <laughs> Ooh, and he was a new patient. He didn't have time. He wanted the bottom line. He wanted to, you know, don't give me, bog me down in the details either. I am fast, fast, fast. Go, go, go. And I, what do you think I did? I was fast, fast, fast and go, go, go to meet him. And so what we do is we actually characterize all of our patients with a letter in their chart. So we know this is a lion coming in today. This is an otter. And in and it's not as critical knowing your patients that you're right. What you're doing when you label a patient a lion or otter or a golden retriever or a beaver is just simply that 
based on their vibe, based on what they're giving off, we're going to characterize it that way, and we're going to communicate in the style. We're going to flex our own styles to meet what we think is there. Yeah. And then, guess what? If we got it wrong, the the critter's going to tell us based on how they're reacting. So it's not that this patient that I saw today, which was a new patient, and he's a lion, and he'll always be a lion. He was in pain. You know, I mean, that that can make somebody mm-hmm. become a lion. Right. That's why I'm telling you, we've got all the critters in us. It's just in what ep- or what environments does it come out in. So he could become the most docile golden retriever down the road in future appointments. And we'll change the little thing. But it gives everybody on the team an idea of how and what's coming in our door. You know, and obviously new patients, you don't know what they are. But boy, after that appointment today, I labeled a big old L. (laughs) You know? (laughs) So so anyway, those are just like three of the, the areas how you apply all of this to a dental office that makes you more successful in the long run. Does it take an inordinate amount of time? Yes, but I got me a hygienist, guys, in the middle of COVID. Wow. And she loves our office based wow. on where she came from because they didn't do this. It was dog eat dog world who's oh, yeah. going to come for my job. Well, it still you know. is in hygiene. Oh, oh well, right I, now. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, like I said, and we had lost our hygienist because she moved to Georgia, you know, so here I was in the middle of going, oh my God, what am I going to do? And, and in ADOM, you hear constantly, you know, and then, when when she, I won't say her name, when she moved to Georgia, what did I do? I got on to ADOM and I said, all right, guys, who's got a um, practice in Georgia? You're going to get you a star of a hygienist in there. And sure, I mean, people just started putting their hands up. <laughs> tell her to call me. Tell her to call me. Oh, yeah. You know, so. It's great. It, oh, so it's you can cool, use ADOM cool. for that, too. Yeah. Awesome. I was going to say, was, yeah, we could call our, our member firms in Georgia and say, hey. Yeah. You know, yeah. Right, right. You wow, know. that's amazing. Yeah. Isn't you know. that fun? So yeah. anyway. Yeah. Super. Again, yeah. like I said the last two times, great information. Oh, absolutely. And I'm not surprised that you have such a fantastic hygienist who's still there and you were able to find her during COVID because, you know, using the analogy of the critters, it sounds like your practice doesn't run like a zoo. It's run more like a safari park where there are no grills. Boys there you nice go. Clothes. Ooh, I like that, Ash. <laughs> That's good. I'm going to steal that. Oh, I'm going to go steal that it. one. Go for it. I mean, it's, yeah, it's just sometimes it's a zoo, but ooh, I want to be a <laughs> safari park. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and the people are interacting, and you're even getting them involved in the hiring decision process. Like, hey, do you guys like this person? Do you guys, you know, well, vote? then they're invested on whether that person succeeds, succeeds or fails. Exactly. Right. 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 Exactly. Right, right. And then, then that's where the working interview comes into play because not only do we talk about getting them into the working interview, of course, we all come together as a massive unit afterwards. Were they able to pick up on our sterilization because we're over the top when it comes to OSHA compliance? You know, I mean, it's just all those little things that maybe they hadn't done in another office, but we show them our way and were they able to adapt, you know, or, or to take it on or were they thinking, oh, this is stupid and, and that, that goes all over me or, or here's, here's a, here's a perfect one. It's not my job. (laughs) Oh, don't ever be in my dental office and tell me it's not your job. If I can clean the toilets, so can everybody else. So don't tell me it's not your job. You know, so did they ever say that? Because some hygienists will come in as divas and they think that they don't have to do squat and the the assistants have to do it. They can be the sopranos of the office. Absolutely. Absolutely. So no. No, we don't. We don't have drama and we don't have divas. Well, and that wow, helps with great. hiring as well, because if they see you have a pleasant office, then they want to work there. Yeah. And and like I said, because this is such a unique and different way to hire in the dental world, they're curious as all get out. And then when they get through the interview, I mean, they're curious on the top end because I'm telling them, I need a critter, you know, <laughs> and which critter are you? And, you know, based on your assessment, this says this. And so I'd love for you to come in and talk to us, you know, and that's what gets them started. Wow. And okay. then they say, wait a second, I'm coming in for an interview and I'm not working? And I'm like, nope, this not is, not a bit. Yeah. And, oh, you're buying me lunch? And, oh, wait, you're putting me with your team? And 
then you're hiring me for a working interview? I mean, I put all that up front. So the wow. ones that I'm really interested in. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Kind of fun. Great. We need to figure out what kind of zoo we have. <laughs> we have or zoo. safari yeah. park. No, I, I safari wish we park. were more of a zoo. Sometimes we're like crickets. <laughs> <laughs> that's not one of the choices. It is not one of the choices. I'm like, is there anybody out there? But that's because they're such great workers, such great workers. <laughs> that's awesome. I yeah. love it. Awesome. Well, it was amazing having you here again, Tamara. As Tamara. always, Tamara. Seriously, though, thank you so much. And again, Lynn, thank you. For it was being a here pleasure again. to be here. And hopefully, you'll be here again. That'd be great. That's a rule. If y'all have me back, <laughs> she has to be here. I remember her saying Good. that. I like you even better now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. So, for all our listeners out there, if you guys have questions, comments, or if you guys just want to get in touch with us, feel free to reach us. Via email, our email is info at eandassociates.com, and that and is spelled out A-N-D. And as always, it's always a pleasure. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening today. Be sure to subscribe to Beyond Bite Wings on your favorite podcast platform. For more info, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, or reach out to us on our website. You can also shoot us an email at info at eandassociates.com.